Welcome back, everybody. Joe Everest, the fence expert. We've got another video to review. Now, before we get started, a few months ago, we did a review video of one of Home Revision DIY's videos that was subsequently taken down. If you'd like more information on what happened with that video, we'll link that in the corner above. But after we posted that video, Jeff reached out with an email, uh, basically explaining that he had misunderstood how fair use applies to YouTube videos. He apologized. It was a big mistake, and we're moving on. With all that being said, we've got a new video of Jeff's most recent fence installation. Let's check it out. This is Joe Everest, the fence expert. My family's been perfecting their way of building fence for over 60 years, three generations. While there's more than one way to build a fence, I'm here to share with you our way. All right, guys, so today's video from Home Renovation DIY is how to build a cedar fence. Uh, if you'd like to watch the original video, We'll link in the description below. Here we go. Hey guys, Jeff from Home Renovision. Today's video, we're gonna show you how to build this gorgeous horizontal fence, select cedar, stained and finished with oil. It only took a few hours and it looks phenomenal and it gives you privacy, it gives you protection from the wind and it really frames in what's going on behind that fence which is our awesome patio project. Come and join us on this one. All right, so the secret to making a horizontal fence is how to keep it simple so that you can install it really quick and get a great look. What we did is we set these posts using the sick of what the hell was it called? Sick of fix. Sick of fix. I don't know. You can watch the video on it, how to put a fence post in. It's a great expansion foam product, but we got to get this project finished because I'm selling the house soon. I don't have a choice. Winter's coming. So we're going to start real quick and dirty here. We're going to get our one by six. We're using clear cedar. We've got cedar posts. These have been here anchored for a week. We're good to go. He went for the expense of clear cedar on the, uh, on the usually we'd call those pickets, but the horizontal rails here. So clear cedar there, but the posts obviously are not clear cedar. They've got quite a few knots there at the edge of the post. Um, interesting to see clear cedar. So it'll look nice from the outside. From the inside, you'll still see the knots on the post. So I, I probably would have gone either way. If we're going to clear cedar on the pickets or horizontal rails i probably would have gone clear cedar on the post now finding clear cedar four before by eight or nine however long hit the posts you used are but finding four before clear cedar post next to impossible so i understand uh, why he used them i mean when you can find them they're incredibly expensive uh, but i don't know it's a little bit of a mixed match fence everything's nice and level make sure everything's plumb and level before you get started we got the board lined up. Matt's gonna mark the outside corner because we're gonna do a miter joint on the outside so that when guests pull up, all they see is gorgeous perfection. All right, give it a mark and off we go to the races. Okay, now their goal here is basically to install that same board a thousand times when we're finished. We're gonna do most of this on time lapse for you and then we'll talk about the nuances and the details, but uh, First, we're going to get the first board in and show you our system because once you see this, you're going to be like, oh, I've got to do that at my house. All right. Step one is you take your cut, you miter it, you bring both pieces with you because you can use the off cut to make sure that your corner is really nice and perfect. And just wiggle the board a hair to the, towards the corner, raise it off the wood. It's really nice if you've had time to let this stuff climatize. <laughs> So Matt, we're gonna cheat and we're gonna go a 16th over because it's gonna shrink just a touch. Okay, now I need you to lift it up a hair. So I understand the first rail you could put a 16th over, but being that they're a mitered corner, so does that, that would have to throw the other side of that 90 degree corner off, right? So if one's going past, I mean, both corners can't go past, uh, past that corner. Eh, we'll see. And I'm just using the level here, folks. Little bit, a bit. That's amazing how many little bits it is to move that. All right, now we're perfect. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna mark the other end. And here's why. You can let that fall open now, fall open, okay because we're installing this fence with PL Premium. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that coming. I did not see that coming. I don't, I don't know anyone that builds fence with, with adhesives. This, 
PL Premium is fabulous outdoors for connecting wood to wood or brick to brick or wood to brick. The stuff just works year round. It's a polyurethane adhesive, okay? So the goal here is to put this on the 4x4 post, press our wood into it. Well, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna mark this stuff here. Okay, now on camera, I'm just putting a dab mostly in the middle. And just a dab will do. And there we go. And here's why we made the pencil marks, because now we're gonna lift this up into place onto those pencil marks. You're gonna use that wood at the end, make sure we got a bit overhang. Yep. And then we're just gonna use just enough. We're gonna just use galvanized brad nails to sink this on. The goal here is for the nails to hold the wood in place until the adhesive takes, takes effect. That's it. Nice and simple. And how's your... So I don't... I mean, I, I understand he just... He's trying to sell the house, so he doesn't need the fence to last that long. Uh, but if you're putting all this money into building a fence, to then just use adhesive and brad nails to affix it, not a long-term solution. It's, this is somewhere where he and I would differ on installation, which is, I guess it's confusing. So he's using thinner, he's using fence pickets as his horizontals. So, because in the last video, he really promoted that camo system uh, in the horizontal fence he built. I mean, he went above and beyond telling people how great the camo system was to use. Uh, so now to see him use adhesive and a brad nail is uh, a little, a little confusing. Overhang. Good. Are you happy with that? Yeah. All right. I know. It almost seems offensive. We're going to just go one nail, an inch from the top, an inch from the bottom. And that's it. The rest of this entire fence is exactly that process. As long as we make our miter joints perfect of the outside and we use brad nails, the simple effect of the weather outside is going to shrink up those holes and they'll disappear. And everyone will be trying to figure out how you attach your fence. At the end of the day, it's because you understand the value of this product right here. PL Premium, gotta love it. So uh, I think I understand a little bit more on why, on why he's going this route. So it's just like the camo system. Uh, I'd say whatever this PL Premium is, it's, this seems like a product placement right? Which is confusing. Uh, so typically when you're uploading YouTube videos, they ask you, is this a product placement video? Uh, you're supposed to, you're supposed to click that it is. It's actually one of the key terms of service for YouTube videos is that you have to be transparent uh, when you're creating a video, you know, for a company, you know, a product placement. Yeah. You know, that was one of the questions I had last video of his was, like I said, he went above and beyond trying to convince people that the camo tool is the one to use. Uh, so I guess it makes a little bit more sense when he's telling people adhesive is the way to go. Uh, this is quite obviously pro a product placement for whatever this PL premium is. Uh, so when you're doing a horizontal fence like this, part of the secret is to have enough vertical supports that your boards aren't warping. In order to achieve that, you can add extra two by fours in between your four by four posts that aren't structural to holding up the fence, but serve a function when it keeps the boards from warping. And you can put them in every two feet or every four feet or whatever you think is necessary. I'm going with a four foot gap. I'm comfortable with it. And the gap between my boards is gonna be somewhere around an eighth of an inch. I'm That's pretty common. Eight foot on center for your fence posts, which half, half of that distance for your support. Uh, so every four foot would be pretty typical. Uh, when we're building a horizontal fence for the uh, vertical supports. I'm looking for a lot of privacy and a lot of wind control here because of the fire table and because our weather is so crappy out here in the country with all this wind. So this is going to be more of a wind breaker than anything else and not much for privacy, but you've got options. You can go with different varieties in the boards. You can go thinner at the top, have a little fun with the design. As long as you stick to outside miters, Gluing the boards on with those galvanized brad nails, you're going to be just fine. The other thing to consider is when you get near the top, you're going to want to cut all of the posts at the same height so that you can install post caps. Every 4x4 or 6x6 that you use is going to need a post cap or it's going to split and it's going to cause you issues with your structure. 
So using post caps is important. We use Atlanta post. I've never heard of post caps preventing post splitting. Um, I know the the typical argument for post caps is it prevents rotting. You know, it, it keeps water from pooling on top of the post. Just from up in Canada, so it might it might make sense though that water gets in the top of the post, standing water soaks into the top of the post, and then freezes and then splits the post. Um, but yeah, it's that's some, kind of a new concept. I new to me, I suppose, being in you know the middle of the United States, we don't get a lot of frost, a lot of freezing, so maybe that's more of a thing up north. Caps because they have awesome products that are made in the United States, and you can go check out the video description to go and see that. They've got solar caps for all the different sizes: four by four, six by six, eight by eight, twelve by twelve. That's right. Even if you got a stone post, they can have a cap for you. And they've also got some other boring stuff there as well, just for simplicity. Now, one more consideration you might want to take into effect. If you're buying your cedar and it's in a warehouse that has outdoor climate, okay, or it's fresh cut, take into consideration where it's sitting. If it's in a nice dry environment, it's not going to shrink anymore. But if you're buying it from a store where it's inside, then it will shrink after purchase. Or if it's fresh cut, it's going to shrink after you buy it and install it. So if you think your wood is wet, and you can tell sometimes just by driving a screw into it and see if the moisture discoloration effect happens, you're going to love that. If it's wet, then just install it tight and it'll have its own gap. If you're buying dry, like in the fall, and it's in a warehouse and the relative humidity is low, then it's not going to shrink anymore. So you got to really be careful with this. If it's not going to shrink, consider using tile spacers. Yeah, you can get 1 8 or 3 16 or 1 quarter inch, and you just need a handful of them because every time you set a board in the nails, you can take the spacer out and reuse it. <laughs> That's probably what we're going to end up doing because I'm pretty sure this time of year, our cedar is completely dry from the warehouse. Matt's going to take off for lunch now, and I'm going to build the rest of this fence on my own. So I'm just going to plow through this and get her done, and then we'll come back when it's time to put the finishing touches on to show you about these lights and other considerations. It looks like, at least you know, during the period of the, the time lapse here that Matt was with him the whole time, I'm not sure if he actually built the thing himself. Eh, probably splitting hairs at this point. ...to help dress it up and make it look absolutely beautiful. Here we are. This poster are left a little bit taller than even if we were using a post cap, typically you want the post caps to be, you know, the base of the cap to be flush with the top of the picket. If we're using a decorative cap, we typically cut the post about an eighth of an inch above that top uh, runner, the top picket in this case, so that you can still see the cap. It's decorative. You want to show them off, um, but that they're not just, kind of sitting up on top of a on top of a post that's significantly higher than the fence. Might look a little odd. This is the product that I'm choosing for the rest of my life. Now, there are other high quality oil finishes, but I love the clear satin. This stuff applies like a dream. Gives a great natural look to the product. And it should preserve it in its natural state like this. I agree on the oil-based uh, stain. Well, actually, his isn't a stain. It's just a sealant. I understand why we're using a clear in this. I mean, he paid a significant amount of money for clear cedar, uh, so you want to show off the grade of the lumber. The unfortunate downside to clear is it won't last won't last as long. You can think of stain and sealant, a stain and sealant product similar to sunscreen. So the thicker sunscreen you have, the longer it takes for you to burn. Uh same thing with the fence pickets. The thicker the stain, the darker the stain, the longer it lasts, the longer it prevents UV damage. Whether we're talking about boards turning gray or we're talking about skin getting sunburnt, both are a result of UV damage. Uh, so a clear sealant is going to be something similar to, you know, a suntan lotion. Not really sunscreen. It's got an SPF of like zero, right, or SPF 10 maybe. Uh, no pigment to it. So it won't last as long, but it will show off the grain of the lumber years to come. So this fence is really kind of simple. We stuck this together with brad nails and construction adhesive, right? That's like superior deck fence building because we don't have fa I I would take issue with calling it superior fence building, uh, construction adhesive and brad nails. I mean, it's certainly a quick way of installing it. I don't know that I'd call it superior. I think I think actual fence professionals would probably take, you know, take note of that 
Um, anyway. Fasteners all over the face of this. And now that I'm sealing it up with oil, every one of these brad nails is not going to go black. This is the deal. You might have noticed in the uh, time lapse, I was using pencils as my spacer. It works great because the short side of a pencil is quarter inch and the wide side is half. So there's not a whole lot else to this. It's a pretty simple project. The secret to a good looking fence is all about the quality of the wood. I'm using select cedar, which is a little bit hard to find right now. <laughs> I have basically picked it up from every store in town to make enough to do the order. It's amazing. Now, I'm just going to finish oiling up the boards. That is a nice look on the different widths of the board. So he used uh, what, what looks like a six inch board on the bottom half, a four inch board on the top half. Kind of gives it a little bit of uh, a unique look. It gives a little bit of texture uh, in a two dimensional fence. It looks nice. Which has got a UV protection that'll last about five years. When it's time for the next coat, I don't. I'd want to look that up. Um, just hearing that a clear sealant has has a five year warranty. Uh, even even the stains stainless sealants, whether it's the ones we use or ones that you find at your local home store, even the even the heaviest or even the thickest stain with the most pigment, the most UV protection. Uh, typically have warranties of three to four years. Uh, so to see a clear sealant, most of those brands, clear sealants, uh, need to be re reapplied every year. Uh, so they have a one-year warranty. Some have a two-year warranty. But to hear a clear sealant has a five-year warranty, uh, it's pretty surprising. I don't have to peel anything off. I can go right over top. That's the benefit of oil. It penetrates into the wood. And when the protection wears off, you just go give it another coat. Absolutely awesome. Okay guys, so just a real quick recap. This fence has got five posts set in that expansion foam. So we one day we rented the auger, drilled the holes in a couple of hours, put in the foam, set the posts. That foam after two or three hours, you're good to go. You can start building on it. And I actually built all of this fence in half a day. So the reality is it, it's a one day build and another half a day to put the stain and lights on. You can do this whole project in two days. Now, if you don't want to use a select cedar like we did, I know it's a little expensive, but considering the gravitude of what we're doing out here in this area, I think it deserved to have some really amazing wood. You can do pressure treated or knotted cedar and you can get an amazing look. This is a privacy fence, which means that you can put it on your deck and you can make it as high as you like to have privacy from your neighbors, okay? It's a quick, easy build. This is the product I started You'd want to check with, with your local, either city, county, governments, uh, to check, check on height requirements. Typically, now if you live in you know, an unincorporated area, a lot of counties here in the United States don't have regulations, but a lot of cities cap out the height of a backyard fence at six foot. I mean, I'd hate for you to, to take this advice and build it as tall as you want and then realize that it's, uh, it's actually out of regulation. It doesn't meet zoning and then have to uh, either take it down or modify it to meet zoning requirements. It's to use, okay? We've done videos in the past. I'm recommending the Osmo oil. It's from Germany, and I've got an importer bringing it in to make it available for all of our viewers in North America. Okay, so this is quite obviously a product placement. Uh, it's actually, it sounds like it's a product he's bringing in to sell. Again, you know, if you're doing videos like this, you need to follow YouTube Terms of Service. There's literally a checkbox that asks you, does this include promotional, you know, product placements, anything like that? This didn't have the this didn't have the pop up that said it was a, a a promotional video. So it's the Atlanta post caps. So they reached out to us in in the beginning of the channel and asked us to use their post caps in some of our videos. As a company, when we install fence, we don't install it with post caps. We use seal post rather than wood. So it didn't make sense, but to see that same company in, in this video, I mean, I know at the very minimum, that's a product placement. They've reached out to us to place their products in our videos. Um, I don't know. I, if you're doing a video like this, check the box that it includes promotional content to keep yourself from violating YouTube terms of service. Just go to the video description and check it out. We got a great deal for you as well. Okay, and Matt, this is a light from Atlanta Post Caps, okay? Made in America company, they sent these up. 
you have two options. You can stick it on top of a post or you can mount them to the side of your fence if you want, okay? Lots of great options in here. That's what it looks like. It's a solar light, so you don't need power, and it gives you great mood lighting for traffic coming in and out of your deck. So he, he left his support 2x4s up above the picket to, as far as I know, they don't make post caps for 2x4, 4x4, or they'll have 2x2. They're always square measurements. Interested to see how he caps off that 2x4. Patio areas at night. Thanks, bud. Make sure you visit them. Their information's in the description below as well, and they ship all over North America. Well, guys, if you like seeing us do projects like this that help your creative juices go a little bit nuts. So it's a bit confusing that some of the joints are covered, but some of them are mitered. I think if you're going to the trouble of mitering the corner, you'd miter your other joints too to, to make them less noticeable. Well, anyway, guys, um, one way of building a fence here, I guess. Uh, it's a, According to Jeff, it's a really quick way to build it. I don't know that it's a long-term way. Uh, adhesives and brad nails don't don't seem to be uh, recognized in the industry as a good long-term solution. Uh, but again, Jeff's trying to sell this house pretty quickly, so uh, it probably doesn't matter you know, if the stain fails in the next year or two and if the boards start popping off. Uh, anyway, take it for what it's worth. Uh, let me know how you guys would do this fence differently in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you guys. And uh, again, I try to reply back to those comments as quickly as I can, but sometimes there's a lot of comments, so it takes me a little while. Uh, anyway, for now, guys, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. We'll see you next time.